All right, so first off, before we get to the bit tonight, and uh, this is for our YouTube audience, and I guess for our regular audience as well, um, YouTube done goofed, yeah. as, as we're the saying, and went, ran afoul of uh, some privacy laws, in particular a child privacy law. Yeah. In that the fact that Google cannot help itself from swooping up every bit of data about every user it can why it doesn't it, I, you know what i bet there are just hard drives and hard drives full of data that google doesn't know what the hell to do with it's just sitting there they don't know what they're doing with it but it's just there but when they figure it out it's gonna be huge um and it turns out they were collecting it's been ruled they were collecting data on um 13 and younger which is kind of illegal um because privacy laws because parental stuff okay. and and um youtube had apparently uh two options here one of them was maybe we should just stop hoovering up all of the data about our users and redo how we do things or completely screw over thousands of creators on their platform they opted to screw over thousands of creators so Obviously. now you have to hit whenever you upload a video or you can set your entire channel this way you have to set a flag that says um, it, whether it was for children or not intended for children. If it's not intended for children, things proceed along as normal, except um, you won't be getting potentially advertising focused toward families. Wait, wait for the Cash 22. Things are going to get weird here. If it is focused on children, um, you don't get personalized advertising anymore because that requires data interaction. So that goes away as well as your comments, your likes, your notification bell. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, all of that goes, you can't use that anymore if it's a, if it's on a video, which I have to sit there and go, how much data are you collecting when j just making a playlist of videos on your website runs afoul of privacy laws? I mean, like, considering the cesspool that is YouTube comments. Yeah. I don't think it's bad for children that there won't be comments on Baby Shark anymore. So, but yeah. wow, like your likes, your notification, and I heard you can't monetize children's videos anymore. No, you can. You just don't get personalized <laughs> monetization, which is anywhere from sixty to ninety percent less money. Wow. Yeah, um, because they they they've geared all of their advertising toward this data collection personalization crap. What are we going to do? We run a kids show here. <laughs> don't even joke. Don't even, <laughs> don't even joke. I want to make very clear. Hello, YouTube. This is not for kids. God, no. God, we are not no. for kids. And Maybe you know, like that one kid from that movie Problem Child. Uh, just just want to wanna point out here. Um, we For me and every other person who's trying to make a go of this, um, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash radio dead air. If you want to support the show and what we do every week, maybe you could pitch in a buck or so over there because uh, it's going to get a lot harder for everybody out here. YouTube really doesn't want people to make money on YouTube, which is interesting because they their whole model is that they do. Yeah. Like they want to sell ads. They just want to give you money for those ads. Um, it, this is going to strike everybody really hard. There's going to be whole channels that just cannot continue, be yeah. afford to continue. Um, there's also going to be channels where it, it, it is up to you to correctly classify your video as made for children or not. Who makes that determination? Whether you correctly identified your video as made for children or not, who knows? If you screw it up, you could potentially be fined and or sued. The video itself, I swear to God, the video from YouTube creators said, if you're not sure, consult a lawyer. Because all YouTubers can afford a lawyer. Right, we got a lawyer on retainer here at Radio Dead Air. Sure, that's a that's a thing. Aren't they going to do a whole separate YouTube for kids? They did. It's a cesspool. It's on fire. It didn't work. Oh. I don't know if you saw a while back, Dan Olson made a video uh, where he talked about how uh, that generated content on youtube was 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 on for kids youtube was just ridiculous that pregnant elsa 
weird crap. Yeah. So okay. it's again, it's it, it would it would seems to me it would be much easier for everybody if YouTube just stopped all the data collection. Yeah. It would it would even be better for YouTube. It would be better for Google because they keep running into people are like, stop doing that, stop doing that. No. Well, now the law says stop doing that. No. It's like an addict. YouTube, we YouTube needs an intervention. Google needs an intervention. They need help. They they have they, they need help. They definitely need Didn't help. Google's motto used to be don't be evil? <laughs> oh, the halcyon days of 2011. That was their motto. It was under the logo. Right, yeah. Uh, what happened there, Google? I think, I mean, we know what happened there. Money happened. Yeah. It's it, Google's own, Google is Google's own <laughs> worst enemy, and they're going to take all of us down with them. So. All right. Oh, that, our dystopian present. Yeah. That having been said, let's get to the other nonsense tonight. Yay! Google hey, hellscape. I hate this. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go on all sorts of go out on the interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, your volume's a little loud, you need to turn me down. Because I can hear me on in the uh, microphone. Oh, okay. Sorry. It's okay. Um, so let's see, where are we going to start this Somebody week? Somebody on Twitter called me haggard this week. He said I was haggard 40 something. I was like, okay, well, fuck you too. Haggard. Like the guy from Harry Potter? Not <laughs> haggard. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, my hair does get very big, but no. <laughs> Guy in the comic? <laughs> <laughs> Hagar. Start one of those threads. No, that's Hagar the Horrible. Yeah, it's a different thing. All right, let's get started this week. Speaking of hair, hey. Um, wow, this guy, this is some special hair. You're you're gonna like this. Um I don't was I don't remember what era. Is this very eighties, I think, this, this guy's hairstyle going on here? Um Woo! I know, right? Oh. FBI Arrest, sub, uh, arrest suspect wanted for stealing armored car in uh, in Tempe, Arizona. Now, wait till we get to it. You're, you're going to love this. Um, an FBI task force arrested a suspect who was wanted for the theft of an armored car in Tempe. Edwin Giovanni Villa, Villa, yeah, Edwin Giovanni Villa, 23, was taken into custody uh, on Monday. He was booked on two counts of felony theft, one count each of conspiracy to commit theft and unlawful use of the means of transportation. That's an interesting charge. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, here's, the, here's the best part. In the photo circulated before his arrest, Via had dark hair. It was dyed blonde in his booking mugshot. Oh, honey. Wait, Via allegedly stole a Brinks truck from outside the Costco near Elliott Road. The truck was later uh, located behind a business about a block away. Uh, with money missing and nobody operating it. Um, FBI didn't say what the reward would be claimed. So, wait. You, he tried, I, th this is his disguise. The hair, the hair, the, the, this was his way of disguising himself so he his wouldn't disguise be. disguise is brassy his... and he would benefit from a lavender shampoo. <laughs> It's like fluffy too. Like he's got some volume in there. That's that that was his way of disguising himself for the heist. He he didn't go with a mask. He he didn't go with with no no, he went with Well, no, I think this was his way of disguising himself after he was wanted. Right. That was his way of of trying right. to yeah. This is this is way of they'll never know it was me. Yeah. Could you still have a face though? Yeah, couldn't you have worn a mask during the, the, the theft and then taken it yeah. off later and then you wouldn't have had to do this to your hair? And you wouldn't have to do this Zach Morris thing. <laughs> that, oh my God, he is Zach Morris. Oh my God. But like he's Zach Morris from like the porn parody. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so unhappy about the whole situation too. 
He's like, I did this to my head and I still got caught. He's in jail. Yeah, he's going to jail. It's like, I did this for nothing. For, for nothing. nothing. Everyone in the channel's got other Fred from Scooby Doo. Crick, hairdresser, give me the mouth boy. Like a Latino Eminem. <laughs> Which is funny because Eminem's whole thing is that he's a rapper who's white. So, like, that's kind of like, you know. I don't think he took into account that it, he'd have to go to, to jail with this hair. I mean, he could buzz it. I would. I think that would be the first thing I do when I get through the door is, like, somebody hand me some fucking clippers before I go to Gen Pop. Jesus Christ, get this thing off me. That would, that because, yeah, that's that's not going to, yeah. Because he's got a... that, like, Village of the Damned bowl cut, too. <laughs> Not good, man. Uh, Will Jr. says, would the real dipshit please stand up? Please stand <laughs> up. Please stand up. Okay. Will the real dipshit turn to the left? Uh, moving along. Um, I've been busted for speeding before. You've been busted. We've all been busted for speeding before. What has been your best excuse to give to the cop for the reason why you were speeding? Oof. I don't know. Oh, you know what? Hmm. The, probably the best one, and it was true, was I was on my way to Long Island to visit my father in the hospital. Okay, yeah, I've, me too. I, I, have had, I had to do the father in the hospital, and it was true. Um, th there, are re there are times when you will give a valid reason to the police officer and say, look, I was speeding for this. This guy... I lie. What? Let's be, I, I usually don't lie. I don't. I, like, Because I'm a fucking idiot, that's why. Give me my ticket. This guy <laughs> didn't lie either. It's just he did not have a very good reason. Um, Reckless driver told cops he was racing home after, quote, cheating on his wife. Oh, wow. really? Florida man was pulled over Sunday night after driving recklessly, told police that he, quote, needed to get home in a hurry because he was cheating on his wife. Cops report that John Earl Pickard, oh, there's a name. John Earl John Pickard, Earl Pickard, was behind the wheel of a 2015 Honda that was going in excess of 90 miles per hour in a 55 mile per hour zone when stopped by the Tarpon Springs Police Department. Uh, Pickard was apparently en route to his Palm Harbor residence following an extramarital, extramarital assignation. That is some lovely euphemism. Man. That is true. Pickard reportedly, quote, indicated his driving was reckless and endangering because he needed to get home in a hurry because he was cheating on his wife. Uh, Where were you coming from when the pop, cops pulled you over? Um, Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I love how I OK. What, what, the, the, here's just like some casual misogyny bullshit. I love that this guy thought that if he told another dude, cop, that look, dude, can you get me out of this? I was I was fucking around with my wife. Can, can you help me out? Come can on. you help me out? We've all been there, right? Bro code, bro code. Can you help me out? He thought that, that he thought this was gonna that would be fine, but no. That's not a good reason. That is not is. Yo, dude. Like I was, when I got pulled over. In an unregistered car with no insurance and a suspended license. And he was like, why are you driving an hour from home in this state? And I was like, to get a haircut? That wasn't a good reason. <laughs> and I deserved what I got. Yeah, you did. You, you kind of did. And I knew it. I was like, no, fuck me up. It's fine. I'm, I'm <laughs> but no, I mean, he, he, try, he was trying to do like, yo, 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 buddy, help a brother out, you okay. know? You dick! You bitches, deserve this. Right? What? I tried the bitches in my right defense. I don't, right, seriously. Yeah. I mean, if my wife finds out I'm putting it to my secretary, you know how she's gonna get. You know how those bitches get. You fucking yeah. idiot. I guess, you fucking idiot. He thought the cop was just gonna go, oh, okay, yeah, sure, no, that's, that's fine, you can go home. I also, like, I know we don't really, we don't like to bag on people's looks on this program, but this dude got two women. This lurch-looking motherfucker <laughs> got two women. Hmm. Just saying. There's a, there's a lid for every pot. 
All right, last week, remember um the the chicken, the giant yeah. goddamn chicken. Did that they was, find the chicken? They did not. Oh. But I want to point out that story was just last week. All right. Yeah. What happened, in case you missed last week's episode, was um, a chicken restaurant had a 500-pound, 15-foot-tall chicken mascot statue that was stolen off the roof. And my Tara was like, oh, I would like one of those in my yard. Who wouldn't? Me, personally, I was like, why everybody in the hell? Wants, everybody wants a giant cock. I don't. I don't. Me, no cock. <laughs> me personally, just the idea, just the effort of stealing that thing makes me tired. Just thinking about it makes me tired. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to pay someone else to steal it. I just So that happened. And not a week later, guess what happened in a completely different state? Stolen Bigfoot statue wanted by Florida Police Department. Well, Florida was not going to be outdone. <laughs> Boynton Beach, Florida. The search is on for a Bigfoot by a Florida police department. Boynton Beach police say an eight-foot-tall, 300-pound statue depicting the mystical creature was stolen in October. It was in front of Mattress Monsters. All right, I got to give it... You, you got to see this store. This is probably some great advertisement for this store. It's, 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 he had this Bigfoot outside. And I would not buy bedding from them. What? I would not buy bedding from that. <laughs> from Mattress Monsters. Monsters with a Z. With a Z, no less. Place I, looks like a gas station. Well, I guess it was Monsters with a Z because of probably a copyright thing. Someone else probably has copyrighted Mattress Monsters. Mattress Monsters also sounds like a Halloween porn. Come on. It does. Yeah, a little bit. So, yeah, so someone, this was sitting out in front of the, the store, and someone driving by went, yeah, that's coming home with me. Why? Our family room's been needing. We have this empty corner, and I just haven't figured out what I want to put in the empty corner. And then, and then I saw the Bigfoot, and I was like, that's what it is. Look at that fucking thing. Who would want that in their home? It's hideous. That is terrible. <clears throat> It's like the. I, I, it's obviously they're attempting to do Harry and the Hendersons. That is, that is an attempt at the Harry and the Hendersons Bigfoot. Does the Bigfoot from Harry and the Hendersons have a big Klingon head? No, I said they started there. Okay. And they had a big failed. Klingon head. They they started at the Harry and the Hendersons and they failed. And like War from the Hendersons is a movie I would see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I didn't know Bigfoot was a Klingon. Also, it has nipples, which I find unsettling. And it only has two. Why do they always give Bigfoot only two nipples? Well, because it's a primate. Bigfoot's a primate. Okay. Primates only have two nipples. Like, how do we know it's a primate and not a bipedded bear thing? Because we have bears that are bipeds. Bears can, bears can walk on their hind legs. Exactly. <laughs> And how many nipples do they have? <laughs> we already have that. It's called a bear. <laughs> we did, we already have the, they already made that. It's called a bear. Fine. <laughs> big a jiggly say Bigfoot for scenting nipples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, that explains the Bigfoot was female this entire time because I'm like do you not know that dudes have nipples? Dude, dudes have nipples. They do. They don't, they don't do anything. They're, they're just they're just kind of there. They're just an easy pain target. That's right. Yeah, just squeeze them and ah. <sighs> Who are you, Shadwell? I appreciate that. Even though that's my least favorite character in that book. So, next up, um, we have, uh, there's, there's an old phrase, uh, fake it till you make it, which is, you, you go into something, a new endeavor with confidence, 
even though it's new and strange and, and you don't know what you're doing, if you if you go into it with confidence, you you can you can get through it. Um, even the presidency. Hmm? What? Even the presidency. Even the presidency. You don't gotta know shit. Um. However, there are certain things you cannot mm -hmm. fake until you make. Uh, one of them being passing the bar exam. Oh, you can. Yeah, you can. She, she failed the bar exam. She, she failed the bar exam. She started a law firm anyway. Now she faces prison. Federal prosecutors accuse Roberta Guede Guedes. Guedes? Am I saying that right? My guess. Guedes. Of aggravated identity theft and mail fraud. Related to the establishment of what they say were two, not one, two bogus law firms. Uh, Roberta. Now, if she passed the bar, she would know that that's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Roberta Guedes has a law degree, but she twice failed to pass the Florida bar exam. She didn't let that stop her from pretending to be a lawyer. Her prosecutors say that in the months after Guedes graduated law school, she used the name of a classmate who did pass the bar, to register two new law firms with the State Division of Corporations. Created websites for both companies, uh, prosecutors say, touting fictitious national and international offices, and displayed stock photos of people who looked like lawyers, but were not. Did you think your classmate wasn't going to find out? Probably. Do you think your classmate got their law degree for fun? Yeah. And wasn't going to do anything with it? Probably. Um, she even represented clients accepting money to handle their immigration and family law cases, but never disclosed she was not licensed to do so. Now, that is fucking awful, okay? Because if yeah. she's handling an immigration case and it, turn, co and it comes to light that she's a fake lawyer, that throws out that their case is fucked. Yeah. She's going to get people deported. She Because she's... Yeah. That is, that is fucking evil. Is what that if is. If you're gonna do this, if you're gonna fake lawyer and fuck people over, at least make those people like Jeff Bezos or something. Like no. at least fuck over bad people. And family law cases, that's like custody disputes and yeah. shit. Jesus Christ. At least start up like Wolfram and Hart <laughs> and represent terrible people so that when you fuck them over, it's all right. Oh. Uh, Angiska uh, Piaseka, I think I've said that name right, attended law school with her. The pair had plans to open a law firm together, but it never came because Guedes failed to pass the bar exam. Unlike her classmate, Piaseka did pass. She opened her own firm, which is based in Clearwater, specializes in wills and trusts, immigration and divorce cases. Guedes offered Piaseka the free use of an office in the Sykes building. Uh, Piaseka used the office a couple of times to meet clients, but otherwise never visited. In September 2014, Gwen has incorporated a business dub, Ferguson and McKenzie. She listed Piaseki, uh, Piaseka as a registered agent for the corporation without her knowledge. You know what? P One of the things you probably shouldn't do to a lawyer is defraud a lawyer yeah. because they are a lawyer. Yeah. Um. It, you know that old saying, uh, it, the, the person who represents himself as a fool for a client, that doesn't count if you are a lawyer because you're a lawyer. <laughs> one of you is a lawyer, one of you isn't. Yeah. I I think I know how this is going to end up. Oh. Bad. Also, where do they get Ferguson and McKenzie from? Yeah, who the fuck are they? The, the, their, their names come from it because we have Guedes and Piazeca, Piazeca. Where did yeah, Ferguson and McKenzie practice Irish names? Ferguson and McKenzie, where did that fucking come from? Hey. Uh, oh no. One woman was, has sought help in bringing her Brazilian daughter to the U.S. documents related to the case for Guedes' name and signature but listed Piaseca's Florida bar number. Oh, no, that's going to get somebody... Oh, that's thrown out. Oh, dude. She represented herself as Piaseca in a divorce hearing. Oh, an immigration hearing. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's just... Oh, my God. Fuck you, jail. That's like some single white female shit. 
Seriously. Yo, just just take the bar. You can here's the thing about the bar exam. You can just keep taking it until you pass. Yeah. They'll let you do it again. And again and again. And there's no and for those of you who weren't aware of this, there is in the US, there's no limit of times you can take the bar exam. You can just keep taking it until you become a lawyer. Also, there are jobs you can do with a legal degree, but without having passed the bar. Paralegal. That's one. Yeah. Do. But no. That's not how it works. Or you could just defraud everybody. <sighs> we, this this <laughs> next headline is amazing. Um, and of course, it's Will Greenlee. Bless Our your heart. Favorite. What? Our favorite. He, he, is, he is a trooper down there in Florida. Deputies solve the mystery of the groin. Really? St. Lucie County. It took x-rays, a CT scan, and a doctor. The sheriff's investigators apparently solved the mystery of the, of the groin. Case began October 15th in St. Lucie County Jail as 30, a 33-year-old Vero Beach woman was in the uh, facility's booking intake area. When asked whether she had drugs or contraband, the woman said no. Yet when the woman went through a body scan or x-ray type procedure, investigators saw, quote, a circular shape in her groin area. Now, here's the thing. When they've got the big machine to scan your inside places and they ask you if you have drugs and you have drugs, just go ahead and cop to it. They gonna find them. A strip search revealed a piece of white matter in her groin area she refused to remove. She was taken back to the body scanner, which again showed the circular shape. So officials decided to bring her to Lawnwood Regional Medical Center and Heart Institute about five miles away. I'm going to laugh if it was like a tampon. Nope. Or, or a diva cup. Nope. CT scan was conducted. They show more detail than a standard x-ray. Um, th in the case of the 33-year-old woman, the CT scan showed, quote, foreign objects inside her body. Removed by a licensed physician, the objects included... Plastic, bla plastic bags and glass vials, which investigators say contained methamphetamine, heroin, and MDMA, all of which are most definitely against the rules to possess. Holman was arrested on charges including three counts, possession of a controlled substance, many other... If you have the drugs in you, just go ahead and say yes. They go find them. Also, cops are no cops. I can't stress this enough. Glass doesn't belong inside your body. God, no. I know they make glass dildos. I know. I understand. I get it. I don't trust them. <laughs> but even so, hollow glass vials don't belong in your vagina. Sidrake <laughs> comes in a little glass vial. A little glass vial. A little glass vial. <laughs> you, get, you get a scare. <sighs> you got to pee and try to hold it a little too hard. Oh. Problem. Because those little vials, they're like... The muscle. They're like those uh, perfume sample bottles. Remember those old ones? The 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 little tiny perfume sample? The glass ones? You have to fill them by hand at Sephora. It's yeah. awful. Just... Good God. Doesn't belong up there. Asking for trouble. Especially, I don't think... Meth, heroin, and MDMA, that is a... That is they a, don't belong up there either. That's a spectacular death waiting to happen. Yeah, that's a combination of things you're going to die but it's going to be amazing <laughs> but you're gonna die in a boz lerman movie <laughs> which i guess if you gotta go <laughs> oh okay finally this week this this keeps i i I, let, let's just get into this. This keeps happening, and it's happened again. And it's at what point does oh god? Small plane crashes in Texas during gender reveal stunt. So many people sent this. So many. In another instance of a quote gender reveal stunt gone badly wrong. A small plane crashed in Texas after dumping about 340 gallons of pink water to indicate that a friend of the pilot was going to have a daughter. According to the National Transportation Safety Board report, 
which happened near the town of Turkey on 7 September. The pilot reported that while attempt maneuvering at a low altitude in an aerial applicator airplane, a crop duster, he dumped about 350 gallons of pink water for a gender reveal. The airplane, quote, got too slow, aerodynamically stall stalled, impacted terrain, and came to rest. Pilot reported no mechanical failures or malfunctions. Uh, pilot was not injured, injured. The passenger suffered minor injuries. The Federal Aviation Administration inspector said there were two persons on board the single-seat airplane. See, crop dusters are the go-karts of airplanes. Yeah. More or less. There's... Where did you put a second person? What? Where did you even put a second person? I don't know. Was he on the wing of the plane? <laughs> maybe maybe he was holding the bucket of water. But yeah, it's a crop duster is not mm -hmm. a robust aer aeronautical vehicle. It it's 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 a it's a lawnmower with wings, okay? All right, that's that's a little understating it, but still, you get my point. And to put two people on there in a plane, just like oh, I I keep noticing a theme with these gender reveal mishaps is the people who are orchestrating these events are very inept, but do not understand that they are incredibly inept. It's like it's like a Dunning Kruger fiesta. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're American. Well, it's not just they're American. They're a certain kind of American. They're a certain kind of American who have to make sure you know the gender of their child based on their genitalia, which is not indicative of gender because gender is a societal construct. But regardless, they need to reinforce that. They really, really want you to know what's going to be under their baby's diaper, which is weird. I've let can we stop calling this gender reveal and start calling it what it is? This is baby junk terrorism is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is baby junk terrorism is what you're, you 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 are inflicting your children's genitals on the world with explosives and airplanes and, and like, think about that. You you hired an airplane to tell the world that your child was going to have a vagina. Do you think you're okay? You're not okay. No, right? You need help. It's At the end of the article, they actually cover... All of it, yeah. Uh, in Iowa, a 56-year-old grandmother was killed when a device meant to shoot out colored powder. It exploded instead. That was when they inadvertently made no, a pipe... No, they spoke to the woman who had the first wonder, one of the first gender reveals. Earlier this year, Jenner Carvenutis, I think, Carvenutis, mother of three, who in 2008 was one of the first people to hold a gender reveal, told The Guardian she, quote, had released something bad into the world. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like she found the Ark of the Covenant only for... She for... the cake and she... all of Pandora's shit came out. She found the Ark of the Binary? Is that what she found? <laughs> yeah. I started to realize that non-binary and trans people were feeling affected by this, and that I st and then I started to feel bad. I will give her the benefit of the doubt because that was 2008, and it's taken us a long time to get to a, a social consciousness point where we are right now. Yeah. Regardless, though, but even it, then, I thought it was weird. It is. It, yeah. Even then, even if we take the whole the the the, the, the gender construct, if we take that out of it. You are still announcing to the world you are celebrating your child's crotch. Yeah. And you're making people come to a whole other party. Like, there's so many <sighs> events that you have to dress up and pretend to give a shit about. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still pleased with myself at the Ark of the Binary. I think I'm, I'm, that was pretty nice there. Oh. I just don't get this, but I, at the same time, I wish I had done it for the cats. <laughs> oh no, but that's, you know what? Someone pointed that out. Okay. I've got to, I've got to, I wish I had gotten like pink and blue cat treats or something and whatever. I've been like, they're girls. All right. I gotta, I gotta put the picture up here. Someone pointed out, I think it was on Twitter that, um, that this moment from the Lion King, this right here, 
<laughs> this was a gender reveal party. Kind of. Um, yeah, it, it, it's the, the, the whole Rafiki and, and, and the... Yeah, like, that... he used to just get a balloon. It's a boy. It's a girl. <laughs> now you have a monkey holding your child up. Over... Yeah, that... Now you have a plane crash. <laughs> it's a mess. Oh, good God. What, what, what in the fuck? Just... It... <laughs> I don't understand why. You know what? I I can get being excited about having a kid, but this is just sure. too much. You you made a human. That's objectively exciting and cool. I don't want to do it, but if you do, that's cool. You can make a human. All I cool. I know. All I know is it is. If you're making a human here in the 21st century, you should probably not spend that money, any money, yeah. on like explosions or planes or or pyrotechnics you should save every dime you have because you're going to need it yeah For little everything. tiny humans are expensive you, you're never nothing is yours ever again <clears throat> all of that money all of it all of it is going into that little crotch cricket you created <sighs> actually crotch cricket's a different thing crotch goblin crotch goblin that's it Gotta get the terminology What's correct. What's a crotch cricket? Uh, then? crabs. Oh, yeah, okay. Different thing. Know your slang. That's important here already. On a related note, I still don't know why herb is an insult. I still don't know either, but I thought I thought it was, you know, I'm gonna run with it. Okay. I've been trying to figure out what that means. I'm <sighs> All right. So if he knows, hit a haggard 40-something up on Twitter. <laughs> So the first thing we learned this week is um, you are the only one who is that interested in 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 your in, in what, at least you should be yeah you're you're the only one interested that interested in in what your baby's presumed gender is that's it you're, you're you you should be less excited about their genitals especially with explosions ten and fingers ten toes a frontal lobe. Because, I mean, you're making pipe bombs and you're crashing planes into stuff. Hello, <laughs> 9 fucking 11. I'm just saying. It's just way too much. We learned this week that, um. <laughs> it's like if someone asks, if the police ask if you are carrying drugs and you are, you say yes. They're going to find them. They are going to, there's, there's not one of those, you're not going to be clever enough to outsmart, especially if you just shove them right into you. It's not like they're going to be, ha, I've outsmarted them. Also, don't do that. Don't, God, no. Um, we've learned that, uh, you can fake many things. Um, being a lawyer is not one of them. I mean, you can, but you're going to jail for it. Uh, we have learned that people will steal the damnedest things. Yeah. An eight foot tall, 300 pound Bigfoot. That is just, I mean, I'm getting, I need a nap just hearing about the idea <laughs> of stealing that. At least it wasn't on the roof, though. I know. It was your heist. It was like, oh, I, I need to lie down. I need, a, I need some water. I need to just, <laughs> I need to hydrate. Just hearing about. <laughs> Picking up a 300 foot tall big because that thing's not wieldy is the problem. It's not just the weight, it's unwieldy, it's off balance. Yeah, it's cumbersome. It's cumbersome, yes. We we did learn what herb means. Mike has informed us. Oh, yes. Its origins lie in New York City and with a national commercial campaign by Burger King where it stated, Don't be a herb, get the whopper. In it, herb was a combination of a nerd and a moron. Ah. We learned things tonight. The more you know. Of course, it's a very New York centric thing, and it, it's you know. I, but regardless, um, we've learned that uh, the bro code is aside from being gross, it's not going to get you out of a speeding ticket. Um, also gross. Uh, and finally, we've learned that um, if your disguise is peroxide, um. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't do crime anymore. Yeah. That's... Uh, I mean, ski masks are even in season right now. That's right. You know, you could probably 
get away with that. You get away with that hard, man. Man, I'm thinking about like Baby Driver, where they have those weird special glasses with the UV lights on them to screw with the cameras. You know? Yeah. Even that is more dignified than like I'm gonna go platinum to cover my crime. Oh, you couldn't pay me to do that. You you could not. My family would kill me if I did that. My family's mad at. 50% of my hair being pink. Why? Um, my grandmother had red hair, and none of her four children had red hair, and I am the last of her eight grandchildren and the only redhead. So my hair is sort of a family heirloom, and they get very upset when I mess with it. So I told them I won't mess up the roots. Like, I'll stick with the ombre. Once it turns white, all bets are off. I'm gonna be that sixty year old lady with the, with like pink hair, but it's a thing. Irish people, man. An heirloom? That, that's an exaggeration, but I'm the only redhead in two generations, so it's a thing. Like I can't mess up the red hair. Y'all weird. Yeah. Yes. 